Hello everyone and happy Halloween season and I have a little bit of a different Halloween themed episode for you guys today. I'm going to talk about an edit I did of Halloween 6 called the No Cult Edit which removes all the thorn cult aspects out of Halloween 6 which is basically all the things I don't like about Halloween 6. So just a little backstory here about the movie. So, Halloween 6 started development in 1990, right after Halloween 5 came out, to pretty poor reviews. Mustafa Haqqad was having issues with the rights to the movie. John Carpenter was actually apparently trying to buy back the rights of Halloween. He had teamed up with New Line Cinema trying to get Halloween back. Mustafa Akkad teamed up with the Weinsteins in Miramax and there was a bidding war. And needless to say, Miramax won that bidding war. So it already started very troublesome. Another issue with Halloween 6 is trying to find the right script. And Halloween 6 is now having to try to deal with what happened in Halloween 5. And that is this mysterious man in black that breaks Michael Myers out of jail at the end. So it took him years to find the right script, try to refine the right script. Producers being involved with their input. Of course, Mustafa Akkad has to try to have final say, so he's got his hands on the script too. The director is making changes to the script. It's just a mess. So by the time Halloween 6 comes out, it's all over the place. It doesn't make much sense. Donald Pleasance died just before they finished making the movie, so they couldn't do reshoots. A lot of things go unexplained, like what happens to Dr. Wynn? You don't really ever know what happens to him. Just a lot of things start and go nowhere. There's two cuts. There's the theatrical cut, which most of us remember seeing and renting on VHS back in the day or seeing in the theater. Then there's the producer's cut, which originally came out as more of a bootleg. That movie features the cult aspect a lot more heavily than the theatrical cut. So what I tried to do with my Halloween 6 no cult edit was try to make it feel and seem more like a, just a proper down-to-earth Halloween movie without all the stupid thorn cult aspects. What does it look like? Well, I can't show you the movie because that would get me in all sorts of copyright issues, but I can tell you and show you little clips of what I did to try to make this movie have no cult in it whatsoever, but still make sense, which is a hard thing to do seeing the movie as it is doesn't even make that much sense. The first thing is, well, I had to cut out all the cult aspects, which cut down the runtime. I had to get this movie as close to an hour and a half as I possibly could, and honestly, I couldn't do it. I got it to about an hour 19. So my edit starts off with the Halloween 5 flashback to try to flesh out some time. Loomis, capture Myers in the Myers house. We see Jamie, going into the jail at the end and seeing Michael Myers broken out of jail. Six years later, it cuts right to Jamie holding the baby, running away from Michael Myers, building a bit of mystery. You're not sure what's happened in the last six years, but you know that Myers has caught back up to her and she now has a baby. I also tried to remove all the blatant shots of Michael Myers' mask to make him appear more like the shape like he was in the original movie. We're then introduced to Danny Strode sleeping and has a nightmare. In the original version, he sees a vision of the man in black and wakes up screaming for his mom. Well, I got rid of the man in black and I cut in him having a vision of Jamie from part four and he wakes up and starts screaming. So the idea being that he is more being consumed by the same evil that both Myers and Jamie were in previous movies. Then the movie continues just like the theatrical cut. We see Tommy Doyle spying on Danny's mom, Kara, through the window. We're introduced to Dr. Wynn, recruit Dr. Loomis back into his old role at the hospital. We cut back to Jamie being chased by Michael, and she gets killed by Michael Myers in the exact same way as the theatrical cut. It then cuts to a flashback of Jamie in part five, hiding in the coffin with the moment with Myers where she gets him to take off his mask and you see the tear cuts back to part six, and then Michaels finally finishes the job. 
and kills Jamie on the threshing machine. We get introduced to the new Strode family. Kara's asshole dad has bought the Myers house from his brother, who's a realtor who's been trying to sell the house for ages. Tommy finds the baby at the bus station, and Wynn and Loomis go looking for Jamie, just like in the theatrical cut. Tommy runs into Loomis at the hospital, and here again to extend the runtime, I inserted a flashback of part one. Tommy and Lindsay run out of the house, signaling Loomis Loomis, Myers is here and he goes and saves the day. The movie continues and Myers kills Kara's mom at the house and Tommy Doyle befriends Danny and Kara and takes them back to his place where he's living at Miss Blankenship's house and basically doesn't explain anything because I had to cut all that stuff out. The whole speech about Thorn and the stars aligning with the Thorn sign, all that had to go. So. It's basically Tommy just telling them that he knows Myers is still on the loose and to stay put, which I think works. I'll go back to your house. So Myers kills Kara's brother and her friends, just like in the original movie. Tommy runs into Loomis at the celebration, and they go back to Miss Blankenship's house to get Kara and Danny and the baby. And in the meantime, Kara's had the big battle with Michael Myers. So they get back to Miss Blankenship's house, and we see who's sitting there, Dr. Wynn. Now I had to do a little bit of magic here and change some things around. In the original version, they walk in, they see Wynn sitting there, he is the man in black. And Mrs. Blankenship, we find out, is kind of part of this cult too. And then a bunch of cult members come and take away Tommy and Loomis. I had to kind of cut that right down, so basically, Loomis and Tommy walk in, Loomis sees Wynn, and he just goes, Wynn. Where is she? Where's Kara? I feel like I've been drugged. We have been drugged. Now this is where the original movie doesn't make much sense either, because in the original movie, it just cuts back to Tommy and Loomis standing outside, and Loomis going, we've been drugged. But I had to keep that in because that's the only way we get introduced back to Tommy and Loomis' storyline. Kara being captured and taken back to Smith's Grove Sanitary. Loomis and Tommy break in just like the original movie. Tommy and Kara evade and eventually do battle with Michael Myers and stick him with all the syringes with all that weird green shit and then beat him down to death, we guess. But the big change I made was to the end, using some footage from the producer's cut. We stick with the theatrical cut, and Loomis is saying goodbye to Tommy and Kara and Danny. They're about to drive off in the car, and he says he has some business he has to tend to back in the hospital. The theatrical cut ends with that, and then you hear him screaming, you don't know what happened. In my cut, he goes back into the hospital, he sees Michael Myers laying there, goes to unmask Michael Myers, and it is Dr. Wynn who is now in Myers' place. And then we see Loomis scream in anger, and then insert the footage of Michael walking away in Halloween Resurrection. It goes to the credits. What I had to cut out was, of course, Loomis seeing the thorn sign appearing on his wrist before he screams. So my cut basically just shows him screaming after he sees Wynn in Myers' place. That is just like a little fun edit I did, trying to basically make chicken salad out of chicken shit, and seeing if I can make the movie work without all that cult aspect. It was just a fun little project to see if it could be done, and if the movie would still work. I think it does. I watched it with some friends a couple of years ago, and most of them said they actually prefer it over the original theatrical cut, because all the fun stuff is still there, all the fun deaths, all that jazz, we're just getting rid of all the stupid cult aspects. And the idea I was trying to put forth with Wynn still being the man in black, still solving that man in black mystery from part five, he was just basically trying to control Michael Myers as like a little pet project, but nothing to do with the grand scheme like a cult or anything like that. He's just one man acting alone because he is a bit crazy and he's trying to control a serial killer. There's no other grand scheme. He's not part of a big cult. There's no big master plan. He's just another crazy. So as much as I'd like to share the entire movie with you guys, I just can't because get hit with copyright issues up the ass. 
but I just thought it'd be fun to explain what my idea was for a Halloween 6 no cult edit. And again, you can do kind of anything with these fan edits. You can use footage from other movies like I did. You can make them completely ridiculous, like there's a Halloween H2O funny edit that I did in collaboration with James Rolfe last year and probably do a video about that maybe next year. He was a little too busy this year to do another collaboration video like this to explain what we did with our fan edit, but look forward to that next year. And let me know in the comments what you would do with a fan edit for Halloween 6. You can make it completely ridiculous or you can try to chop it down to something a bit more down to earth like I did. So, happy Halloween.